So words that I've given in the spelling bee, I love sardoodledom. I think it's just a fun word. It's a useful word. And the speller who got it was Kenyi Awad. And he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard and he couldn't stop giggling. And I had to sort of reel him in and you know, bring him down to get him to spell the word. It was, it was that was a neat moment. <laughs> It may sound like a joke, but I usually say I get a front row seat at the best event in the world. My name is Jacques Bailey. I am the official pronouncer for the Scripps National Spelling Bee. As a child, I had a total fascination with language. I was trying to learn French all my life. I still am. Uh, the Spelling Bee sort of fed into that in sixth grade and Latin in high school. I, so I sort of drifted throughout my life just one thing would keep interesting me, and um, languages kept my interest uh, all the way up till now. I didn't win any spelling bees in sixth and seventh grade, so I was really hungry and really wanted to, to win. And in eighth grade, that was when I uh, won each spelling bee I was in until I won the big national spelling bee. In the national spelling bee, my final word was elucubrate. And believe it or not, the, the runner-up word was glitch. And glitch is an everyday word now, but at that time, remember this is like Ataris were computers then. And so glitch was a new word, and the origin was from German. So the speller before me spelled it with T-S-C-H, and at that point I had to correct the spelling, so I tried T-C-H and it worked. My biggest feeling when I won was relief, because this was the second day of being in front of lights, and none of them were LED and I was exhausted, so I was so happy to have it be over, but I wasn't willing to misspell a word to get it to be over. I became involved with the National Spelling Bee because I wrote to them and I said, I don't know if you remember me, but I won the Spelling Bee 10 years ago, and since then I've learned Latin and Greek and German and a lot more French, and I think I have a skill set you might need for something or other. And it just so happened that they did need somebody to be associate pronouncer, which is at that point was basically a chief fact checker at the B. I had a hidden mission because I thought they were using words that were too hard. I thought that we don't need words that nobody's ever heard of to get a champion. And at that point, believe it or not, we didn't. But now they study so hard that we need the impossible words. Most of us in our daily life might misspell accommodate. These kids are at an age where their memory is amazing and they have time to devote to this, and they love it. But we need to find words like Ursprache because they've studied so much that you've got to look for the nooks and crannies. So these kids have a, a very deep knowledge and deep intuition, a, a, a Sprachgefühl, a feeling for the language, that is uh, much broader and wider and more informed than most adults. People think length matters for these spellers. For most of them, it doesn't. A long word is usually a lot easier. The four-letter words are often the hardest. I have a particular view about human rights. I think the most fundamental one is a right to education. And working with the B enables me to do something that I'm able to do to inspire people to educate themselves. My role is to help the spellers, so it's very much sort of a, an affirmation and a, a role where I, I get inspired by them. So it's, it's more than fun, it's really meaningful. Mm -hmm.